What's up, A to Z Sports Live on a Friday. Glad to have everybody along for the ride. Uh, we're going to have an interesting show today because uh, the class action lawsuit from Brian Flores uh, keeps getting added on to, and now the Titans have been implicated in that with Ray Horton joining Brian Flores and also Steve Wilkes with the class action lawsuit against the NFL for the misuse of the Rooney rule and the lack of minority coaches getting uh, the right opportunities when it comes to climbing the coaching ladder in the NFL. And really, it's been fueled by a podcast interview that former Titans head coach Mike Willarkey did 18 months ago in October of 2020 about the hiring process the Titans went under uh, in, 20, in January of 2016 when Amy Adams Strunk hired Malarkey as a Titans head coach alongside hiring John Robinson as the Titans general manager after the firing of Ken Wisenhunt and Russell Webster. So a lot to get to. We've got multiple statements and quotes from the now and the past uh, from all sides of this thing. And so, Zach, we're going to have a, a good show today, and especially the audio from Mike Malarkey that was pretty interesting. Uh, we'll play that here throughout the show a couple times. So we'll ask you guys, how do you – uh, really, like, how do you place blame on the NFL and the Titans for the Ray Horton, Ray Horton uh, hiring incident with the Tennessee Titans? And then also, how does the NFL actually work to fix the minor minority coaching problem moving forward? And then we'll wrap up a uh, more serious show with Ain't That Good News at the end because we do that every Friday. So, Zach, welcome in. Let's get this thing rocking and rolling. Yeah, and, and we have A, a to Z South Padre Island. I assume that's what that hat stands for. Padre? Yeah. Is that what you think it's for a Padre Island? Yeah, I don't know. No, it's because I'm literally a, uh, I'm a Padre. Ah, father. Yeah, it's a play on words. Padre, you don't, you're not great Spanish, right? So, no, padre. the only word I know in Spanish is adios. Well, now you know, now you know two, right? Because Padre is father in Spanish, but you add the W in there because I'm a, Padre, a dog dad. Yes, there you go. Oh, now you got it. Now, now I got it. it. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, look, we've got a good show today. As Austin uh, laid out, I mean, it is. Uh, I, I we're going to try to fix a very big problem in the NFL, <clears throat> and the, and then, excuse me, we'll uh, place some blame. But first, we do want you guys to share the show. Excuse me. <clears throat> With man, I. I now I'm clear. Now I'm choked clear. up. Clear one, two, check one, two. Uh, <laughs> Facebook, we are broadcasting live on Facebook, YouTube. It's these damn allergies. I'm taking Zyrtec every I, damn day in the month I don't of hear March I don't and hear April. And I got uh, I got uh, something that can't get out of my throat. But uh, we are live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. We will tweet out our YouTube link live on our Twitter at A to Z Sports. And make sure you subscribe to the show up on YouTube if you watch it there. On Also on Facebook, more people will pile in over the next five to ten minutes as you guys do. Bottom left corner of your screen, share, share now to public. Sharing is caring on this show. We need to pop up in your Facebook friends news feed. How that happens is you guys share the show on Facebook. So big show today. And, it, it, you know, not good PR yesterday for the Tennessee Titans. We will discuss. We will talk about it. We'll get your opinion. Let's get this party started. Yep, let's do it officially. Welcome into A to Z Sports, powered by the BetMGM uh, app. I am Austin Stanley. He is Zach Bingham. Make sure you follow us all over social media. We go live every weekday morning at 8 Central Time on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Also, make sure you find those links on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Uh, Got to thank our sponsors because they truly do. Uh, make things happen for our show, and they help out you guys. Wilson County Hyundai, for your new ride, check them out in Lebanon or uh, at wilsoncountyhyundai.com. The Bone & Joint Institute, boneandjointtn.org, the region's destination for comprehensive orthopedic and sports medicine care. And Farm Bureau Health Plans, get better with Farm Bureau Health Plan. That's better coverage, better rates, better service. Learn more about a health plan for you at fbhp.com. Slash A T O Z. So Zach, you 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 think you're struggling with allergies uh, this you know first week of April? Uh, try being super allergic to all the grass, the uh, the trees, and the weeds, and then injecting yourself with that nine times a week. And uh, so I, you mentioned you I think say they, overall you you sound good this season I, though. I, so far, yeah, I did cut the grass yesterday, so I might be in for a doozy <laughs> later on. 
But so, uh, yeah, I found I'm deep. I'm somewhat deep into my allergy shots, which helps. But again, I'm now injecting myself with what I'm allergic to in hopes to not be allergic to it anymore moving forward. But the first bloom season, uh, it might be a, a double whammy for me. And before we get officially started with this show, because we got a lot to talk about, a lot of serious stuff, I would like the chat to wish uh, our A, a happy birthday. Today is his birthday. So in the chat, give a celebratory emoji and a happy birthday to to one young Austin Stanley. How old do you turn? What, 43? Uh, uh, (laughs) What'd you say? How old do you turn? (laughs) Did you say 23? No, I said 43. <laughs> oh, oh, I think he said 23. Uh, I am 32 today. Uh, officially 32. So just continuing to creep into my early 30s. Growing uh, so up yeah. before our eyes. Yes, I am. And, uh, you know, nothing like uh, celebrating your birthday, like talking about the Rooney Rule misuse uh, and some serious allegations with the Tennessee Titans. So uh, we will we will uh, go ahead and get uh, deep into this. So this comes out yesterday, Adam Schefter, uh, puts out the tweet, and I'll and I'll put up uh, the graphic on the screen for this. But Adam Schefter releases uh, the fact that uh, Ray Horton, former Titans defensive coordinator, is now joining Brian Flores and Steve Wilkes, two former NFL head coaches who are uh, filing the class action lawsuit against the league for uh, the misuse the misuse of the Rooney Rule and uh, phony hiring practices uh, when it comes to the head coaching jobs in the NFL. So here's from uh, Adam Schefter's tweet. Mr. Horton was a longtime NFL coach and defensive coordinator when he interviewed for the Titans head coaching job position in January, 2016. This turned out to be a completely sham interview done only to comply with the Rooney rule and to demonstrate an appearance of equal opportunity and a false willingness to consider a minority candidate for the position. Indeed, the Titans' all-white ownership and management ultimately hired Mike Malarkey, a white candidate, for the head coaching position. Years later, in 2020, I'll add October 2020, Mr. Malarkey admitted in a podcast interview that the Titans, quote, told him he was the coach. So we've got the audio uh, from that interview. So we're going to play the audio several times. So we'll go ahead and play that instead of reading the quotes from Mike Malarkey from the Steelers Realm podcast, and then we'll continue forward with the story. But here was Malarkey in October 2020, 18 months ago, on the Steelers Realm podcast. Your coaching career that you might have done differently or changed? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I'll, I'll tell you guys this. Uh, I've always prided myself in doing the right thing um, in this business, and I can't say that's true about everybody in this business. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very cutthroat business, and a lot of guys will tell you that. But I allowed myself uh, at one point when I was in Tennessee uh, to get caught up in something I, I regret, and I still regret it. But uh, the ownership there, uh, Amy Adams Trunk and her family came in and, and told me I was going to be the head coach in 2016 uh, before they went through the, the Rooney Rule. And so I sat there knowing I was the head coach in 16 as they went through this fake hiring process, knowing uh, knowing a lot of the coaches that they were interviewing, knowing how much they prepared to go through those interviews, knowing that, that everything they could do and they had no chance of getting that job. And actually the GM, John Robinson, he was in on the interview with me. He, he had no idea why he's interviewing me that I have the job already. And I feel like, you know, I regret that's because I pride myself in my, my kids first that they do the right thing. And I always said that to the players and here I am the head guy not doing it. And I've regretted that since then. It was the wrong thing to do. I, I'm sorry I did that. Um, but it was not the way to go about it. I should have interviewed like everybody else and got hired because of the interview, not, not early on. So that's, that's probably my biggest regret. Wow, that's a touching story, and appreciate you sharing that with us. It's, yeah, so cool. it's, not, it's not hard. It's not hard to do the right thing. It's really not. You can, get, you can get caught up in this business. So, I think that is Mike Malarkey not pulling any punches on how he felt, how he currently feels about the Titans organization. Now, he did take the job, right, and was the Titans head coach for 2016 season, uh, 2017 season, uh, and then fired after that. And so he, th- a couple things stand out to me on that is that the Titans told him he had the job and that he, he said the word uh, fake interview process and so and a phony interview process. So I think it's pretty interesting uh, there. So uh, the timeline's important because Ethan asked, uh, Malarkey was a John Robinson hire. So uh, Malarkey was not necessarily a John Robinson hire they were kind of hired together in a way. The timeline is that the Titans fired Ken Wisenhunt 
in the middle of October of 2015 after he went 5-27 and as Titans head coach. Amy Adams Strunk had just taken over the franchise late, earlier that year from her brother-in-law, Tommy Smith. So Amy Adams Strunk fires Ken Wisenhunt in the middle of the 2015 season. Mike Malarkey is then elevated to the interim coaching position, right, as the head coach. Titans then end that season. They do not make the playoffs. They're one of the worst teams in football. It's actually the worst team in football. Had the number one pick. And then uh, in January of 2016, Rustin Webster is fired on January 4th. 12 days later, John Robinson is announced as the new Titans general manager. And then two days after John Robinson is announced as the GM, Mike Malarkey is hired as the head coach. So John Robinson, two days later, Mike Malarkey, right? And Mike Malarkey said right there that John Robinson was in that interview and already knew that Malarkey was going to get the job from Amy Adams Strunk. So who else? They, they, they interviewed three other people for that head coaching job, Zach. Doug Marone, who is a white candidate, and then two minority candidates, Ray Horton, who was the defensive coordinator on that staff under Ken Wisenhunt, and then Terrell Austin, who is another minority candidate too. So that's the timeline of the story. Uh, Zach, you know, I'll let you kind of jump in here after going through all that. Well, look, I, I think if we set the Rooney rule aside real quick and just talk about the Titans situation during 2016, really – you date back to the last couple of years prior to that and then post-2016, where were the Titans franchise? They were in a very delicate situation. Yes. They were rebuilding to the T of rebuilding. That's why they hired a brand-new general manager and fired their previous one, Mike Reinfeld. Or I guess that was Rustin West Webster. Yes. And so in that delicate situation, because, and if you know the facts based on Bud Adams' death, is the the state of the franchise was not in good hands. No. The ownership was still going back and forth between Amy's sister and then like if we all know how it's divided up. I mean, if you don't, here's how it's divided up. Right when Bud Adams died, the franchise was divided up into essentially three parts, really five, but three. 33% was one of the sisters. 33% was Amy Adams Strunk. And then the other 33% was divided up into 11% by each grandchild. grandchild. So there was... Of, of one of Bud Adams' uh, kids who had passed, I believe, right? Yeah, so, yes. And so, like, it was spread out. If, if anybody in this chat has had a family member die or anybody of wealth to die, you know that that, and you don't even have to have that immediately, to, to know that that situation is always very murky because people start strapping up, think that they, they are, uh, instead of earned, they are afforded or entitled to different things. I'm not saying in this particular situation. Usually that happens. So it was a murky situation, and we actually found that out. What did they do? They went to the stability because Tommy Smith, who was the husband of Amy's sister, came in as president and ran this franchise very poorly. He was in Houston most of the time. He was trying to do something from afar, and mm -hmm. it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. Ken Wisenhut was not the right hire in which T Tommy Smith actually handpicked. And then it started to strategically go over to the ownership of Amy Adams Strunk as controlling owner. So you finally had somebody that was going to put in the elbow grease to fix this franchise. That was the most delicate situation and time in the Titans franchise. So what did they choose to do? They chose to go with the stable coach of Mike Malarkey that had the familiarity. And we talked about it. We were covering this team when that was happening. Yes. One thing that Mike Malarkey did very well during his interim time after Wizenhut was fired was he earned the trust of ownership. That is and a networking strategy. And the locker room. And, and was, the locker room, but more importantly, the owner, because the owner was going to hire him if he was going to get hired. Yeah. He strategically did that. Let's wipe away, and this is, I set the Rooney rule aside prior to that. We're going to talk about this. He did what any person of any race, uh, sex, gender, doesn't matter, would do on how you earn a job. You network. 
You earn the trust of the person that is offering the job. He did that, and he did that so well that they probably made that decision because of the delicate situation that the franchise was in. So was was their decision justified on why they chose Mike Malarkey based on the principle of stability? Yes. In my opinion, yes, it was. Did they go about it the correct way? No, they did not. No. And that, I think, therein lies the problem. But... Look, this is a societal issue that is seeping into the NFL. And let's go back to 2003 when the Rooney Rule was created. The reason why it was created was because Denny Green was fired by the Minnesota Vikings and Tony Dungy was fired by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the league looked around and they looked at minority head coaches or the lack thereof, and they enacted the Rooney Rule. I will start this, and we got a lot of things to discuss, Austin. Yeah. The premise that I will always base all of my decisions on, you cannot force anybody to do anything. You cannot force somebody to love you. You cannot force somebody to hire somebody that they need to hire, especially billionaires. Austin, you can't force me to do a God dang thing. Nobody can. Only I can have that decision and vice versa. But when you get into billionaires, you cannot force somebody to do something. And the Rooney Rule, I think that the problem overall with the Rooney Rule, I think the premise makes a lot of sense because I think change does need to happen. But you cannot force somebody that has a billion-dollar business to do something and put their backs against the wall based on race. They right. have and to want to hire somebody of a minority color. So I... I don't know. Again, we'll talk about how to fix the problem later on in the show. Yeah, but you yeah. cannot force anybody to do anything, especially if they're a billionaire. And in this situation, they weren't going to force them to not hire Mike Malarkey. Yeah. So the the Rooney Rule, and I'll say this probably a few times throughout the show. The Rooney Rule was created with good intentions. The Rooney Rule is being misused. And what Mike Malarkey is saying in that interview podcast interview from October 2020 is that. The Titans knew and told Malarkey that they were going to retain him as the head coach after he was the interim coach, head coach there for the rest of the season. And they had to interview three other candidates uh, then to uh, to fulfill the to Rooney fulfill, Rule. Yes, they right. had to fulfill the Rooney Rule, right? So now because of all that, I'm going to go ahead and read the Titans statement that they put out because you have to you know say everything, right? The Titans statement this uh, uh, yesterday afternoon that put out our 2016 head coach search was a thoughtful and competitive process, fully in keeping NFL guidelines and our own organizational values. We conducted detailed in-person interviews with four talented individuals, two of whom were diverse candidates. No decision was made and no decision was communicated prior to the com completion of all interviews. While we are proud of our commitment to diversity, we are dedicated to the continued growth as an organization to foster diversity and inclusion in our workplace and community. So, Zach, I, I will say this about the Tennessee Titans. The Tennessee Titans were, in 2020, which was a very racially heated year because of what happened with George Floyd, where a lot of conversation, a lot of tough conversations and necessary conversations were had in 2020 because of what happened. The Tennessee Titans were one of the most vocal franchises in the NFL when it came to how to handle and how to move forward and help end racism. They were. And, and so you have to give them credit for that. Are the Titans a racially racist franchise? No, I don't think so. But here are also some facts. The Tennessee Titans are one of six NFL teams who have never had a, a minority head coach or a minority general manager, and that includes their time with the Houston Oilers. So they have not hired somebody in those two big uh, football jobs uh, that are minorities. They do have executive vice presidents currently who are minorities. And so th they have worked towards fixing that. Right. And right. so <laughs> the, the problem is that the NFL, in my opinion, has allowed franchises to misuse a good intended rule. The good intended rule is to allow for more minority coaches to have opportunities to interview, to gain experience through that process, to hopefully hold those jobs. 
nearly 20 years after the Rooney rule was implemented, it really hasn't done much of anything. No, because Mike Malarkey in the eyes of the Tennessee Titans was the best candidate for the job that was being filled. And I'll add to this. I'll add to this because Brian Flores, his complaint, because somebody asked, um, somebody asked uh, if Brian Flores is just making this out of nothing. No, I think Brian Flores probably has a legitimate case. If he's talking about how he was handled by the Broncos and other franchises, then yeah, I think Brian Flores has a shot. The difference in those situations with Brian Flores that he is mentioning with those franchises and the Titans is that the Titans retained an interim coach. It was not a brand new search. So while the Titans, if, if the Titans in fact did tell Mike Malarkey ahead of the interview, we're going to keep you ahead of interviewing Ray Horton and Terrell Austin and Doug Marone. If the Titans did tell Malarkey that, then that is a really, really poor process of going about an incorrect process of hiring a head coach. It's an incorrect process, but at the end of the day, that was the guy that they wanted to lead their team. So it doesn't matter in my opinion. And it will never matter, in my opinion. If It doesn't matter if you are black, white, Asian, male, female. If a company believes that that individual is the best person for said job, that is who is going to get the job. Do they need to interview more minority uh, coaches for coaching positions to open their eyes to the possibility of that best candidate to fill the job being such minority? Yes, I do. But you cannot force a privately owned company like, I mean, you cannot force a sell of, I mean, it's very difficult, let's just say. They're going to have to really mess up to force a sell of an NFL franchise because of how much it is actually worth. Because of the value and the money that they make, the positions that are filled in general manager, you talked about it, executive vice president, football operations, General, all of those are super important to the funding and the progression of your franchise. You cannot tell that company that is a multi billion dollar company what to do or who to hire. You cannot do that. Like, you just like Austin, nobody over my dead body is going to come into A to Z Sports and tell us who to hire. The person that will be hired will be the best individual for said position. And that will never change. That is the hardest part of this. They went about the Mike Malarkey uh, process incorrectly. If they really wanted Mike Malarkey, they interview all the candidates, they hire Mike Malarkey. They didn't do that. They messed up by telling, and look, high school drama, your mouth will get you in trouble. If you tell Cindy, Cindy will tell Chelsea, Chelsea gets to Jake, Jake gets to John, all of a sudden it goes back around. They they did a very poor job of not shutting their mouth, going about the process, and then hiring their guy. Because at the end of the day, that's behind closed doors. Ownership can do whatever the hell they want to do. And forcing somebody to do something is never a solution. It never is. You're going to back them into a corner. Why do you think, let's talk about the mask uh, mandate. Why That was hell. That was hell, right? Because they forced people to do things. Lockdowns. Hell, they forced people to do things. Forcing Americans who are free to do things never work out. Do they have a problem? Yes, the NFL does have a problem. There need to be more minority head coaches. But you know what needs to happen? The ownership of all 32 teams needs to change their mindset. That's what that is how to enact change. But these, like, I don't, I don't actually, I mean, I fault them for. The, the circumstance on how it was going about it, but they wanted Mike Malarkey. They have the ability and the right to hire Mike Malarkey. All right. So um, let's go ahead and ask this question. Cause there's a lot of comments that are coming in and I, and I've, I've been reading the, you guys' comments uh, while Zach was talking there. And there's a lot of good comments on both sides of these things. And I, I don't want to necessarily just pick comments, um, you know, out of the blue, but there's a lot of good comments coming in. So br- keep bringing those in. Um, so the question is, how much do you bl- place blame on the NFL? And then how much uh, should you place blame for the Titans? So if you have 100% blame, how are you splitting that blame between the Titans 
and the NFL. How are you splitting up the blame for the Titans in the NFL with the Ray Horton situation and the misuse of the Rooney rule? And we'll probably play the Mike Malarkey clip again here in a second. But first, let me tell you guys about the Bone & Joint Institute, boneandjointtn.org, the region's destination for comprehensive orthopedic and sports medicine care. <clears throat> Whenever uh, you get hurt in life, know who to go to, know who to trust. That's boneandjointtn.org. Uh, they can get you back to health. They have over a dozen physicians there at the facility in Franklin who specialize in any type of joint injury uh, that you could possibly have. So get back to your health and the rehab facility is fantastic too. Boneandjointtn.org. Bet MGM. Download the app today. They power our morning show. And look, I won my first Major League Baseball prop bet of the season. I, I saw something on the internet. I was like, look, I'm going to tail it. And I won. Go. And I won it via BetMGM. It was a $50 bet. Uh, it was under uh, uh, strikeouts. And so, look, I, I'm I'm now I'm now hot. Maybe I sh- I'm going to start tailing this guy until I start losing. But the best part is BetMGM, for new users, you, you can use the code ATOZ200. So ATOZ200. $10 money line, line wager to win $200 if either – Major League Baseball team hits a home run. Bombs. They're hitting bombs. You can make money off of homers. That is what BetMGM can do for you. Download the app today. A to Z Sports here live on this Friday talking about the uh, Mike Malarkey and Ray Horton uh, situation that came out yesterday of the NFL where uh, Mike Malarkey went on a podcast uh, 18 months ago and talked about how the Titans – uh, misused the Rooney rule um, in 2016 when they hired him or told him he would be the head coach for 2016 before finishing the interview process for Ray Horton, Doug Marone, and Terrell Austin. Uh, so how much pl- uh, blame do you place on the NFL and how much blame do you place on the Titans? So if you had 100% of blame, where do you cut that up between the NFL and the Titans? Steven says 90% NFL, 10% Titans. Eric says 70% NFL, 30% Titans. Uh, Steven says 90% NFL, 10% Ray Horton. I don't think you can blame Ray Horton in this situation. Ronnie Seed says 60% NFL, 40% Titans. Scott says 80% NFL, 20 Titans. Orlando, the same thing. The Titans for how they handle it. Um, then uh, Sin City says 100% blame on the NFL. Um uh, Jeff Rubel says 10% on the NFL, 90% on the Titans. So Jeff is the first person to go more Titans than NFL. Uh, More percentages, I'm trying to read. David says 80% NFL, 20% Titans. Jarrell says 100% on the loose lips of the Titans. So I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't don't agree with that. The percentage I do place blame on the loose lips of the the Tennessee Titans. They got to be smarter than that. So I'll, I'll go ahead and start. I agree with the first comment or Steven. I go 90% NFL, 10% Titans. The 10% is the stupidity of the Tennessee Titans. When you hire a head coach in the NFL, you should know you're going to fire him. (laughs) Like, he ain't going to be around for a long enough period that you don't fire him. So they should know that. And when one gets fired, just like Mike Malarkey did, and he has nothing to lose, he retired, usually the secrets that you talk about get released this was a poor pr job by the tennessee titans yeah they do not need to tell their practices their uh, employment hiring practices they don't need to they need to go about their business do their job and then because the rules are the rule like there are rules yes and there are rules not just for the nfl there are employment rules for companies all across the country right so you have to follow some rules if you are in a certain you know corporation i mean there's just governmental rules so they didn't they did not follow that process but the overall blame is the nfl because the nfl have a has just like they they've got a lot of problems they got a safety issue they got uh, a minority issue or lack thereof within the the head coaching realm they've got issues they got a domestic violence issue within their players we've seen that so, but this is something that they have got to fix. And I think it had been ignored for a long time. You know, the rule started in 2003. And Austin, you brought it up. The summer of 2020, I think, opened a lot of people's eyes to the racism across the country. 
And then that really started to open people's eyes of probably racism within massive companies. We've seen it a lot of places. Now, I don't, I'm don't. i not talking about cancel culture. I'm talking about the way you go about getting to know somebody regardless of their race or gender based on an opportunity that you can or, or you are going to afford them, right? Yeah. It, it, it's closing your eyes and getting to know the person. And so I place 90% on the NFL and 10% on the Titans not handling that particular situation. So um, a couple comments. Ethan says, so we're just talking, taking what Malarkey said on faith. So again, we do have to, you know, we, I, I, no, I, we I, thought that Austin, you yeah, and I thought that when it happened. Well, at the time, so back in 2016, at the time this happened, we were on, I, I remember this and I thought about it more as it came out yesterday that the Fritz Pollard Alliance, which deals with minority opportunities or the lack thereof and kind of acts as the, um, as the muscle that can go do the investigation and talk on behalf of potential minority candidates who do not, who do not get the fair opportunity like this situation. The Fritz Pollard Alliance came out and accused the Titans hiring process and malarkey to be a misuse and uh, of the Rooney rule, like malarkey said. Now, Ray Horton at the time said that he was happy and appreciated the interview opportunity and said it was a great interview and experience at that time when the Fritz Pollard Alliance came out. So this, this was a question in 2016, right after Malarkey was hired. But I, I do I do find it's it is a I, in my opinion, feel like it's a little different when you're when you're just making an interim head coach the permanent guy. Like I do think that needs to be recognized. And a lot of people who don't pay attention to the Titans or don't cover the Titans will not remember that situation. I believe everything in life is a situational basis for the most part. Right. And the Titans ha- handled it poorly, absolutely handled it poorly. And so they've got it. They, and maybe as a few people in the chat, have mentioned that uh, Amy Adam Strunk was less than a year on the job as a controlling owner. Right. That's some inexperience on her part of how to handle things in the NFL. Well, she, look, she didn't know how to run this company. Like, I, 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 get, I don't give grace to really pretty much anybody, but for this situation, Austin, if I just sat there and said, look, you're going to take over this multi-billion dollar franchise, go. I mean, you think you'd make some mistakes in the first 365 days? Do you think that, and, and what she did makes sense. She resonated with Mike Malarkey, who had been in the NFL for a long time, Right. Mike Malarkey had been in and out and had seen that. She needed some help. She needed somebody that she couldn't just create a new relationship or wasn't willing to, don't want to say can't, wasn't willing to create a brand new relationship with a brand new head coach. She had just had a brand new general manager. Her, her advisor really was Steve Underwood, but Steve Underwood, didn't he come out of retirement? For that, yeah, he had to come out of retirement to help solidify the Titans. I mean, the Titans were an absolute mess; like they were a complete mess. And so, what they do? They hired the guy who had been a head coach two times before that. Yeah. So again, and who I, was their interim head coach? Right. I, I mean, I may dumb mine down to five percent blame on the Titans because I understand it. There is no excuse for coming out and telling somebody you're going to get hired and these interviews are going to be phony. So that I, I I don't give any grace for. But for Amy Adams Strunk. She was looking for somebody that had experience within this industry. So who did she, she relied on Steve Underwood, who they got out of retirement, who was friends with Bud Adams in the sixties and seventies. Well, he had been 80s. the Titans president for decades and the Oilers for a long time. Right. So he, he came out of retirement to help solidify everything. Right. And then John Robinson, who, who had ties to the community because he was from Tennessee. And then he had had experience with Tampa. He had experience with the new England Patriots, which were well-respected because of all the championships that they won. And Mike Malarkey, who she could talk to on a day-to-day basis after the pressure of firing Ken Wisenhut, they, they were pressured into doing that. I mean, Ken Wisenhut made it a lot easier because he didn't win games, but usually you would most I think owners would just sacrifice the season, get through it, 
and reset at the end of the year. They didn't do that. They enacted change in the middle of the year, got the interim head coach. And so I understand why Mike Malarkey was hired. The way they went about it was incorrect. That's, and, but that is, that's also because as you brought up, Amy, I'm struck was a year on the job. Well, yeah. It's a tough job, man. Like, but again, there are no excuses for the way they went about that. It was a it was a really dumb thing to do. Sometimes smart people do stupid things. I think Amy Adams Strunk is a very smart person. Everything she's done uh, since this, if this was the one mistake that she's made, because she has done some great things as Titans controlling owner. And and let's also talk about this. She is a a woman in a men's NFL. Like so, she is also a part of breaking some barriers. She's as a well. minority. She yes. is a minority. And, and so I think I don't I don't think Amy Adams Strunk is a bad person for no. what she did here. I think she made an a mistake, and she probably feels bad about it at this point too. Especially after all of it comes out, uh, you know, she's done. A, she's shown who they are, who she is over the last five plus years, and she's shown that she can be a good leader. And so I, I do, she made, she made a, a stupid mistake if this is in fact what happened. And so I don't know what should happen to the Titans. You know, should they be punished for this? Can you find them? Uh, you know, I, I don't really know. Um, no, but you also, no, it, but, because you, you're, you're now punishing. You cannot force and you cannot punish somebody into doing things. Like usually if you punish me, I'm just going to come back 10 times harder. So like, like you cannot have that mindset if you're the NFL. You have to teach and you have to educate. That is the and look whether you value college or not, those four years of a young person's life are very valuable in their educational phase on how they learn, on how they react when the real world comes around. That's why that's the premise of life, right? Is how do we educate and learn from others that maybe. Look, I, I mean, I can learn so much from from different people because I don't understand where they have come from or how they deal with things. That is what needs to happen to enact the change. But the NFL forcing a fine or forcing a rule, you're never going to be able to put a gun to an owner's head and say, hire a minority. It's not going to happen because that's not right. Like at the end of the day, that is incorrect. Now they've gone so far over the line that they've screwed everything up. They've got to educate these owners. And I think, I think Jarrell, this will kind of lead us probably into our next conversation. Okay. Jarrell brought up something I think pretty good. Jarrell says it's a kind of like a weird sorority of racism. And I don't want to say racism. I think that's a strong word, but I think the second sentence there just aren't a lot of black people in these guys' circle. And he's talking about the owners. He talk, and when he says circle, it doesn't mean the players that they employ, right? Because the majority of the NFL is African American, right? So you're not, yeah, that's like the majority. 75% minority. Huh? Yeah, I think it's like 75%, something like that. Right. So it, we're not talking about the employees, but Jarrell brings up again, I don't, I don't believe that it's sorority racism. I do think that it is a form of a circle that these owners and these higher up executives yeah, run the in good old boys club. Everybody knows what that is. But Austin, you said who is the executive vice president of the Tennessee Titans? Gil Beverly. He's African American. We've met with Gil. Gil's yeah. an extremely nice guy. He's a very and, respectable and smart individual. And he He's, came and, from ESPN who did a he did a lot of great things at ESPN when it comes to college game day and his resume speaks for itself. But like, I don't I don't think how do I say this? Because I, I believe we talked about this when Brian Flores first came out with this class action lawsuit against NFL teams. The NFL has an issue with minority candidates not getting fair shots. That is the basis of the situation is that Ray Horton was a minority candidate who did a fake interview because the Titans already told their guy that he was their guy. That is the basis of the story. And how many other minority candidates were the Rudy rule token, right? That's, I mean, that's what it is. And I'm sure there's a lot of guys out there who felt like they only got this opportunity because the Titans or whoever other NFL team had to check a box. 
And nobody wants to be the person that just checks the box and then they move on away from them. And so you've got to be able to fix the situation moving forward. So how do you fix this if you're the NFL? How Really, how do you fix this? And Orlando, thank you. Jim Caldwell, former head coach, former respected head coach. He has now said, screw it. I'm not going to interview anymore because he continued to be that Rooney Rule box check. And so he said, I'm done. And Jim Caldwell got tired of that. And I respect Jim Caldwell for talking about that. Well, Jim so Caldwell you, was a head coach. Right. He was a head coach, but after he was fired, which the Lions. He was a head not, coach for two different franchises. No, I know. I know but hold on. I'm talking about after this. But he he said that after he was fired by the Lions, where the Lions probably shouldn't have moved on from him, that he continued uh, to uh, get head coaching interviews just to check the box. Because he, as a former head coach, was a very passable checked box, right? Yeah, that's the rule. Like, it doesn't matter if you're white or black. You probably, it's really hard to get a third head coaching job in the NFL, right? Mike Malarkey got one. (laughs) Mike Malarkey got three. But that was a situation. Like, how many years did he actually was a head coach? The fact is, he got three. Yeah, but that's few and far between. That's the point. I know. That's the point is, it's few and far far between for three opportunities. And Mike Malarkey, of all people, got it. Because of the circumstance, we talked about that. that. I'm, not if, ta- if, I'm not denying the circumstance. I'm just making the extra point. But but what I'm saying is, it wouldn't matter if Jim Cardwell was white. It's very hard to get the third, and that's what the rules' problem is. They're the rule is literally giving Jim Caldwell false hope. Yes, it's the the rules' problem. That that's where Roger Goodell has got to figure that out because. Jim Caldwell is probably correct. He should probably stop interviewing because, you know, it, it doesn't matter who you are. It's really hard. You've you failed, let's just say, you failed twice as the NFL, as an NFL head coach. It's hard to convince a franchise, especially with the young gun era of he- head coaches. Now you're working against that too. Sure, sure. All right, so a couple comments here. Uh, T-Town says, interview coaches in good faith and decide after. Yes, that's how everything should be done. Titans Rossi says, I feel like Malarkey should have stepped up at the moment and said something then. He knew he had the job, and that's why he didn't. He's a day late and a dollar short in his opinion. Look, I and again, Mike Malarkey was asked by the interviewer a question, what would be your biggest regret in your career? And so Malarkey is saying he regrets this. Now, it's also fair for us to say, that Mike Malarkey is a pissed off fired coach. Like if you go back and if you look at how Mike Malarkey exited as Titans head coach, he gave press conferences. The press conference after the Titans beat the Chiefs in the wild card round of the playoffs was how he didn't have support from above him. And he felt left out to hang out the dry because Ian Rappaport went on national TV the day before or right the, the morning of the game and said that Mike Malarkey's job is not safe even if he wins this game. And he was right. And Malarkey, that relationship over two and a half years cracked and broke really quickly. And so he's pissed at how it ended. And clearly in October of 2020 was still pissed and how it ended, and brought it up for the world to hear. Yeah, well, you're going to air, your exes always air dirty laundry. It's never the person that you're currently with. <laughs> I mean, that's the premise. And when 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 ownership hires a head coach, they should know that eventually this person that they're hiring is about to be their ex eventually. <laughs> you're going to get fired. It's just, it is the circle of life. Very Rarely do you have Bill Belichick's. Do you have Pete Carroll's? Do you have Mike Tomlin's? Very rarely. Those are anomalies. You you hire coaches to fire them. Yes. Right. So I I do think that we have probably the hardest question that we'll ever pose to anybody on the show, which is how do you fix this problem? Like literally, how does the NFL really fix the minority coaching problem moving forward? Because I think everybody agrees that there is an issue, right? Yeah. But If there's puzzle pieces, it's easy to say, ah, this is a puzzle. But to put them together and actually make a picture is a a lot 
more difficult so, when it comes to that type of stuff. I heard Ron Slay talk about something on 3HL yesterday. Uh, it's something that I never thought of. Ron Slay played professional basketball for a decade plus overseas uh, in Europe and other places. So I, I think his point that I'll call, talk through also will uh, be good for this situation and conversation as well. But first, Zach, tell everybody about Farm Bureau Health Plans. Yeah, fbhp.com slash A to Z. Better coverage, better rates, better service. 200 plus locations across the state of Tennessee. Farm Bureau Health Plans has helped me personally. I save 20% on my health plan every single month by switching to them. I didn't know what to expect at the beginning of the year. I I had my same health plan for the last three years. It wasn't great, but it it gave me stability. And once we we became partners with Farm Bureau Health Plans, I was like, look, I'll take a chance. I'll see what it was. They took a chance on me, and we started this endorsement. It was real time. We had already started the endorsement before I had actually gotten my quote. I went through a health health assessment. It was 25, 35 minutes. I got my quote back, and I literally saved 20% compared to my old health plan. I ditched that bad boy real quick, and now I've got better coverage at a better rate with better service. That's fbhp.com slash A to Z. Don't forget, download the BetMGM app. It's a great way to do it. And for new users, they're always trying to give you $200. That's what BetMGM is trying to do to help you get started with your sports betting life. So download the BetMGM app today. Use our code ATOZ200. That's ATOZ200. You place a uh, $10 money line wager on any baseball game today. And you will get $200 when a single home run is hit by either team in that game. It's a great way to get $200 bucks, uh, right there with the BetMGM app. So download the BetMGM app. Use our code ATOZ200 and place a $10 money line wager on any baseball game today for $200 bucks when a home run is hit. Visit BetMGM.com for terms of condition. 21 or older, Tennessee only. New customer offer. All promotions, subject to qualification, eligible requirements. Rewards issued with knowledgeable free bets or site credit. Free bets expire in seven days. For problem game support, call Tennessee Redline 800-889-9789. So, Zach, we asked the question to everybody. How does the NFL really fix this moving forward? And so I, there's some good comments. I want to read uh, read them, and I want to get the Slay's story after we read some. Yeah, comments. yeah, I do want to hear that because yeah. because uh, that that was a good tease. I was I was thinking about that during during my read. Michael brings this up. This is actually pretty interesting. Michael says the problem is there's no easy way to fix the Rooney Rule. My biggest concern is that the end result will go to litigation, talking about the Flores lawsuit, be settled. And the coaches in the lawsuit will then be, quote-unquote, Kaepernicked. So to say there will be no real long-term change. So those guys, they get their money. But here's the thing is, I don't think that these coaches are jumping on this lawsuit because they want money. I think they're jumping on this lawsuit to enact change because they are African-Americans, you know? Like, they are being punished by the structure of the NFL due to the color of their skin in their mind, right? That's what they're suing for. Uh, Mark says 32 jobs, best available, usually gets hired. Their uh, their college game could help by hiring more minority coaches. There are only 14 in the NCAA. What do you think about that? Only 14 minority head coaches. I guess that's in football bowl subdivision, like the, the biggest of college football. I would assume it's from Mark Jones, so I don't yeah, know. Yeah, so that's that's what that's. I mean, there's 129 schools, which that's a low number. But yeah, I mean, so I think that brings up kind of where. Well, I how going. many minority head coaches are there in the SEC? The SEC, man, it's it's the middle, it's the beginning of April. I'm not my SEC is not. I mean, zero. I can't think of one. Derek Mason was fired by Vanderbilt. By and hired by Clark Lee, I, I think zero. Yeah, that's right. So the so, most powerful, con- the most powerful conference in the sub sport that feeds the NFL has zero minority head coaches. So here's here's the here's where I'm going to get with the Slay connection. So Ron Slay on three HL on the Zone, one of our partners. They he had a good point yesterday. He said, and he is an all SEC. He was the SEC player of the year, his junior year, I believe. And so he went and played overseas for over a decade. So when he retires from professional basketball, he wants to jump into coaching. And he told a story yesterday about how 
when he was going to these coaching clinics, first off, he had to have his degree. So he went and got his degree. Then um, he went to these coaching clinics. Well, at this point, he's in his mid-30s. All these other guys in this coaching clinic are in their early 20s. And what kind of struck him is that coaching in sports is a career of passion. We started this company when I was 26. Now, I'm, today's my birthday, ironically, 32. And when you were in your late 20s, right? We started our sports talk careers in our early 20s for low pay. But you can only low do pay. that. Low pay. That's how every. That's how it works. In, in mm-hmm. coaching and in sports media, you start early at low pay. And guys burn out because the pay doesn't increase that much. It's a lot of crazy hours. And as you get older, you get more responsibility. So if you start this career in your 30s, you've got so much more responsibility than you did when you were a 22-year-old grad student. So Ron Slay's point was, man, I'm in my mid-30s. I have too much responsibility with a son, a family, bills, a mortgage, everything over the last 10 years. I can't start from the bottom as a GA where a 20 something, 22 year old kid can start as a GA making $7,000 a year, sleeping on couches in the facility. Ron Slay can't do that, but that's where coaching careers start. And so when you have 70 plus percent of the NFL's athletes, players are black or minorities they're missing out on that starting of a coaching career. That's how you get Sean. That's a very, McVay, that's a very Kyle interesting Shanahan, point. Mike McDermott, because those guys aren't athletes. Like they might've played, you know, low college or something, but they start their coaching career right after their college eligibility is done because that's when they have to, because they don't have the ability to play professionally. And so Ron's brought this up and I was like, damn, he's right. You can't, you can't, after your pro career is over, are you going to go be a GA? You were making millions as a pro. You're going to go be a GA, basically working for free to get your coaching career started at crazy well, it hours. It just depends on your network, right? Sure. It goes now, then it goes to life. Like look at Byron Leftwich. Leftwich went that route, and it has worked out so far, right? Yes, but that is that that is I think few and far between but, yeah, in the but, scheme of it. I was shocked, Zach, to see that Reggie Wayne got hired as. Um, the uh, wide receiver coach for the Colts. Because on my honeymoon in St. Lucia, Reggie Wayne was there with his wife on their 10-year anniversary. And I saw the spot he was staying in. I saw what uh, he was staying in the millionaire suite in the, on the resort. It was sick. It was not what I was in. But <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. but Reggie Wayne is now grinding as a position coach in the NFL. Now he, he jumped to there, right? So, and Mike Vrabel, look, Kyle, great point. Doesn't Vrabel just completely squash that argument? But what was his connection? He started at Ohio state as a position coach and he played for Vrabel, uh, played for Belichick, played for big name coaches. So there's the, yes, there are Vrabels there that jump and start a lot higher. But Ron Slay's point was for the high majority of coaches, those coaching careers start as free labor in their early 20s as a graduate assistant or some type of coffee getter like Arthur Smith, and they work their way up. So we posed the question, how do you fix the problem? And I think Stephen, you know, I, I think that's a good point. That's on like the detailed side of it. I think Stephen gets this right. In order to fix it, a much broader and deeper issue has to be addressed, right? And that is... It goes back to Jarrell's comment earlier is the circle of who is hiring. Okay. Uh, yeah, true. And I want to bring up G-Man. G-Man says, if you made millions during your career, you should be able to afford to be a GA. So that brings up another point is that not every pro athlete makes millions. And a lot, and we know the, the percentage of people, but who, they make more than every, the common man. Sure. But so the, the, I, I agree with G-Man. If you've made $300,000 in one year, 
you know, you're already ahead of the game. But it let's mean also that you it may may not piss but away. But we also know we also know the star athletes don't make the best coaches, right? And the star athletes make the most money. So you're talking about the but the mid tier and lower tier guys are still getting paid. They not it's, in. Hold on, here's the problem. They were not in the '80s, because what is the generation of coaches now? What has been the generation of coaches from the 2000s in the last 20 years? They were the role players or guys who could not stay in the league from the 70s and the, and the 80s. So that's why they were able to get into coaching. I think we'll see guys from the more recent era of the NFL who were four-year players but made $5 million bucks be able to jump up in the coaching ranks now because the money has changed. So I think that thought process is working from working a little backwards. How you fix the problem is not from the lower end and working up the ladder. It's at the top of the ladder and working down. If more minority general managers were uh, around, more minority head coaches are around. But you because can't... it's circle. Let's let's not it's not sure. Talk. But, but let's just that, talk this honestly. But how did Roger Goodell work to work his way to get become the commissioner? He was in the mail room, right? Like the GMs are doing the same thing. They're also the GAs too. No, I understand that, but it's all about your network, man. It's who yeah, you I, know. I, I it's not what that. you know. That is like I, I a, the life. It's the life lesson that everybody should know. It's not what you know. It's who you know, especially in today's age. And so do Mar Mike Malarkey got hired from interim to full-time head coach is because who he knew, he knew the owner. And so it look, the, the overall bigger problem is the education process. I think the only way to fix this is time. And I, I, I would say that just based it on the blanket statement of racism is, uh, you know, you're probably, you're, you are, we as a generation are less racist than our great, great grandparents, right? We are let and our kids, the next generation, hopefully will be less racist than our grandparents or our parents. It time is the only way to fix this. You cannot, you cannot just sit there and expedite the process. And you so here's do and, it. And, and here's where I agree with you with time because honky tonk on YouTube says black ownership is a way to fix it. So why is there no black <laughs> ownership? Hold on. Why is there no black ownership? Because of time, right? Generations. It takes generations of family wealth to be able to be owners of NFL teams. Amy Adams Strunk grew up in the NFL family of the Adams back in the when he created the team in the 60s, right? It's generational money. I have uh, one of my friends. He's black. He doesn't. He's not going to get any inheritance. Why? Because that's not how his family generationally has worked. Right? I will because my family had that opportunity. <clears throat> so that's. It takes time. Time is the answer, right? Yeah, and, and no, that, that's why. I mean, that that was the answer to the question. It's yeah. a hard pill to swallow. It, it, yeah. It's hard. And, but and, and, and having these conversations and having the Mike Malarkey, whether you like, hate Malarkey, think he's full of, you know what? I don't know. But him saying that that's how it was handled, him being a white guy saying that's how it was handled gets noticed, unfortunately. Yes, I don't think that enacts change. I, I, think. I do think it starts conversations, and the more conversations you have, the more opportunity there is for things to be fixed. And, you know, Jarrell brings up there were only 60 years ago there were color water fountains. I'll tell you a story that I think has impacted me. We talk about generations, right? Less racist than our great-great-grandparents because of a different era. My dad told me a story. He went to go see Jackie Wilson. Jackie Wilson is like an oldies, a great oldies singer. I love Jackie Wilson. He's in like the Otis Redding and Sam Cooke uh, genre. I love uh, love Jackie Wilson. My dad went to a concert back in the day, and there was a rope right down the middle. I, and he told me that story, and I, I can't even imagine that. I don't even know what that looks like. I don't even, I can't even comprehend, right? right? 
that is the time that has passed, right? He's experienced that. That now, was your dad, right? Right. That's and like, he, he was yeah. on the white side, but there was a co there was a rope, and then there was African Americans on the other side to to watch Jackie Wilson. I will never experience that, but that was uh, let's just say that there was racism there, right? Because yeah. there was a rope that didn't make that doesn't make any sense to me, and that should make zero sense to our children. So, and and here's the hard part: the only way you change it is at the top ownership the turnover of nfl ownership is not going to be high this is going to stay within families for a very very long period of time if all 32 owners are white expect in about 50 years 30 of them to be white right maybe yeah. there will be two and and honky tonk who brought this up says players could buy teams honky tonk bro no that's not like you think you think players are rich enough to buy teams you're wrong no, that's that's not wealth. That's, LeBron needs help. Yes, like think about that. LeBron Pey James Pey needs Manning help. Needs help, huh? Uh, Peyton yeah. Manning needs help. LeBron James needs help. Ben Roethlisberger, Tom Brady, those guys would need help buying teams. Tom Brady is going to go over the three hundred million dollar threshold for earnings in a career on the field this season, and he and he couldn't do it. Like, there's a difference in player wealth and ownership wealth that I don't think anybody in here can comprehend. No. And here's what I'll say about the rule. Cause I think this, I think that the rule is hurting the NFL, not helping it. I, and it's, it, that's hard to realize, but I don't think that you can force a privately owned company to hire certain individuals. I actually personally think that that's not fair. Like you have to change it, but you cannot force somebody to hire them based on them being a minority. And that's what they're trying to do. Look at the rule that they just changed. Yeah. I think that is unfair. That go that is literally, I mean, semi, if you turn it around, that is racist in that sense. You need to change the mindset of the person to hire the best individual, regardless of their their gender or their race, not force one to hire them because of their gender or their race. Yeah. It's ass backwards. Yeah. Uh, a couple comments. Nate says, didn't Mahomes buy into the Royals ownership? Uh, and then G-Man says, Magic Johnson put together a group to buy the Dodgers. It can happen. Yeah, but what is that? Patrick Mahomes has a sliver of Royals ownership, right? Magic Johnson put together a group where he is, neither guy is the minority or the majority owner. Like 33% of a multi bill. How much oh, here? Can you help me out? How much are the Titans worth? Oh. You, they got to be worth, I mean, billions. So I would say um, I'm working on it. <clears throat> Let's see if Forbes will have made me do a paywall or not. Because I think this is interesting with the amount of money that we're actually talking about. Um, and, and Sean brings up LeBron owns a little of a soccer team. Sliver. A little bit. You can't make decisions. <laughs> yeah, you're just get, you're just building your wealth is what you're doing. So I'm scrolling now. I'm, I'm, at, I'm trying to find the Titans because they're a lot lower on this list. Oh, man. The Tennessee Titans um, <clears throat> value was $2.625 I, I can't even do that on my calculator. <laughs> that tells you, but I mean, I, I, I can't. So 33% of that is $825 million. Yeah. And Plus, and the Titans and the Titans Act are the 28th highest valued NFL franchise. So Amy Adams Strunk in herself, just her portion, and plus it's probably more because her sister wanted to sell. So there is a so she owns more than that because she's she there's probably a plan to buy her out. Yeah. Eight hundred and twenty-five million dollars. That's only thirty-three percent of things. Yeah. Of, and, of a singular and entity. That's, and that's one of the bottom five priced franchises. You you're it's F U money times F U. That's what it is. Yeah. So you it's it's that's why I say 
it, and they brought up Shad Khan, who's the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, who is Pakistani, I believe. Yep. That's one minority out of 32. Like I said, well, there's it, uh, one of the, the Mrs. Pagula who, who is, uh, owns the bills with her husband. She is a minority as well. You got 30 out of 32 that are white, right? Yeah. That's not going to change in 50 years. I'm sorry. Yeah. And so the answer to, uh, there was out of question since I had the list up, who's the highest David asked that the Cowboys 6.5 Patriots at five. Giants at 4.8, Rams at 4.8, Washington at 4.2, top and, five. And j Rum brings up something that I, I think the last sentence is the most important. j Rum says, if I'm the best candidate, hire him. If Vrabel's the best candidate, hire him. But give him an actual chance. It's the actual yeah. chance that is the issue with the rule. Yep. It is, is this phony? Is this fake? Do you actually believe but like Austin, we interview people all the time, literally a ton. You can tell if they have it or if they don't. The I, I hope that the conversations that we're having will give more minority candidates an actual chance. It should not give them the job. It should give them an actual chance. Like, do you think, and I'll ask you this, do you think that the Texans hire Lovey Smith because of racial pressure? I mean, I can't answer that with any, like, I uh, do. I don't know. I can't answer that question because I have no idea. But I do understand the timeline of that happened right around the Brian Flores situation. First arose, yes, but I have no idea. And that in itself, if in fact that did happen, would be awful. You don't hire somebody just because they're black. You don't hire somebody because they're not black. You hire somebody because they can fill the role and do the best job, in your opinion, if you are hiring said person. That is the issue. And so, yeah, I, I nor I didn't expect you to answer that question. I can't answer that question either. But the surrounding pieces, just like the Mikey Mike Mark Malarkey situation, sure did feel like it. <laughs> it sure did feel like Mike Malarkey got the job before he actually interviewed. Right. It sure did feel like Lovey Smith and that hire was pressured in by the NFL because of the surrounding pieces of what was going on. That's all I'm saying. And look, and then the McCown thing yeah. around that, as we know, Jarrell brings up Josh McCown. They basically had to say, Hey, you, you're sorry, bud. You ain't getting this you job. Can't, you cannot hire Josh McCown during this situation. Like this is it's ass backwards. Yeah. So look, I, I thought today's show, this was, uh, I will be honest. This was one of my, not say favorite, but like, I thought this was a great show Productive. because th this is a hard conversation to have. And the more of these that we have, hopefully it gets fixed or hopefully, you know, eyes are open wide to what the hell is going on. The Titans did stuff wrong, but I think the chat solidified. And I think we all solidified that the NFL is to blame. Yeah, the NF, the Rooney rule is is has is been, to blame. The Rooney rule was again. I'll say it again. I've said it a million times. The Rooney rule had great intentions, but it was, um, it was screwed up. It was, and I'll, I'll I'll I don't usually speak for Austin. It is difficult for two white guys to speak on race. It is, I, and I I will admit that. But I do believe that Austin and I try our hardest to have an open mind and learn from the chat, interact with the chat, and say what we actually feel and what we see. And I think this is what we are seeing within the NFL. And my like these shows are not stressful, but they are hard and heavy. But my my favorite part of having these shows is that I get to read a lot of the, the comments from you guys. They get to continue to have me learn. That's my favorite part of it. Yeah, I, I agree. All right. So let's wrap up the week with good news and uh, we'll have some more fun. It is my birthday and we've been talking for an hour and nine minutes <laughs> about the heaviest topics you could possibly have in sports. But all right, time for anything good news. The first act, tell everybody 
about Wilson County Hyundai. Yeah, Wilson County Hyundai is where you need to go to get your next ride. WilsonCountyHyundai.com, the Palisade, the Elantra, the Sonata, the Santa Fe. They have your perfect make and model. You just got to go find it. Well, there's two ways to find it. You can go online at WilsonCountyHyundai.com and look at their inventory or you can take the quick trip down I-40 exit 236. Austin and I have test driven the Palisade. I own a Sonata. I love this brand. You can love this brand. They got fuel efficiency out the wazoo, especially with their Ionic. That is in a, their electric vehicle. Payne Bone, the, the owner of Wilson County Hyundai, I talk about him all the time. He'll hook you up with a great deal. Just say, hey, heard about you guys on A to Z Sports. I'm looking for a new car. How can you help me? They will. And they'll hook you up with a great price. WilsonCountyHyundai.com. Download the Benham Gym app. Use our code today, ATOZ200. That's ATOZ200. You put in your first deposit and a $10 money line wager on any baseball game, and you get 200 bucks when either team hits a home run. If you need help betting on baseball, Alan Bell knows what to do. If you need help navigating this crazy time in the NBA, Brian Edwards knows what to do. Those guys, A to Z Sports Picks, will be live today at 2 p.m. Central Time to get you set up for today in the weekend of sports betting. So make sure you take advantage of that. Again, A to Z Sports Picks presented by BetMGM coming up at 2 o'clock Central Time on the same Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch channels you're on right now. Time for Ain't That Good News. All right, good news. The good news is it's my birthday. All right, happy birthday, old man. <laughs> happy birthday, uh, all of that. Uh, happy birthday. Appreciate all the birthday wishes. Uh, I'm not like a huge birthday guy, but I do. I do wish we had a better, com- a more fun conversation to have, a lighter conversation on my birthday. But uh, birthday turned 32 today, so happy birthday to me. There we well, go. do you feel do you feel any different? Are you excited about this new year? Do you? I mean, do you do that? And and I understand. I'm not really a birthday guy either. The only thing that I want to do on my birthday is go eat Hattie B's hot chicken, drink beer, and hang out with my friends. No, Those I'm are looking, kind of like my requirements. Yeah, I'm looking forward. I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a extra sized lunch today at home for my birthday. I've already planned that out. Looking forward to that. Uh, but no, I mean, I woke up, my back hurt, my feet hurt. I was sneezing and itchy, itching, you know, just another day. <laughs> I've welcomed to 32, but no, I'm, I'm excited about it. Uh, we're going to have family time tonight uh, with my wife and pups. And then uh, tomorrow I'm going to have some, have some fun with some friends that are coming over to the house. Hopefully the weather cooperates as well. And then uh Sunday family brunch uh, and then uh, some more party time afterwards. So yeah. So that's the birthday plans. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's go to the chat. Good news from Big Ten Jeff. USFL starts this week. Let's go Tampa Bay Bandits. I think I can get on board with Jeff and the Tampa Bay Bandits. You're not going to get on board with that. (laughs) No, 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 I'm not. Uh, Aaron says, good news is, as we speak, I'm watching the launch of the Kennedy Space Center, and it uh, have been delayed for a long time. It's finally go time. We know our guy Aaron is into NASA. And yeah. so uh, that is good news right there. Mark Jones puts uh, good news on my shade, which is the Lakers <laughs> failed to make the play in tournament. I did win on the over last night, the brutal game with no, no stars, the Warriors and Lakers last night. So I hit that over. Uh, David says the VA paid for his new hearing aids. These puppies have Bluetooth Ooh. white noise options. They work. That's good for us because now you can hear us. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Uh, G man is playing a gig tonight in Tupelo, Mississippi and tomorrow at Pickwick. So if you're around Pickwick, Hey, say, say, Hey to G man, uh, on base. I I assume G man will be on slapping that base on, on the base. Yep. Uh, let's see. Danny says the it's Friday week is over. He's going Turkey hunting this weekend. Ain't that good news? I've seen some Turkey hunting pictures. Um, over the last couple of, uh, I guess since I don't hunting season opened, I, I, I'm not a hunter, but um, Jabu says, good news, uh, old ass teachers just be our seniors by three points in a senior versus staff basketball team game right now, today before the show. There you go. There you go, Jabu. Not, hey, you can, hey, once a shooter, always a shooter. <laughs> That's what I say. You, maybe you can't deep defend or get boards like you used to, but once a shooter, always a shooter. Man, those faculty basketball games are epic. I had uh, in my eighth grade faculty basketball game. Our uh, 
uh, Kevin Stallings' son was on my team. And so we had Kevin Stallings playing in the game and then a former European player. So that was fun. Um, and let's see, D and B's Zach Goodman's going to Dave and Buster's. So I hope you win. Here's yeah. my, my good news is you, uh, is unique. I woke up this morning and I was scrolling through Instagram and I saw something that caught my eye that usually would. not We've talked a lot about baseball today, probably more so about baseball than we have in the last year, but the Nashville sounds have started. Yes. My good news is, I don't know if you've done this, and I've been pretty good about this over the years. That batter's box bar out in right field is a damn good time. It truly is. So I, I texted my buddy Turb. I was like, we got to go back there. Now, I have, I, I did, I was like, hey, let's not get, I don't want to get kicked out again because I have been booted yep. from a sounds game for heckling. Yep. But it is a fun time. They're let, they will let me back in the doors this season. <laughs> and so the batter's box, I, I thought about that this morning. I was like, that's a damn good time in the summer to go. You don't even have to watch the ball game, but to go uh, enjoy the outfield and the festivities. I have yet to go to a sounds game in that ballpark. It's I've, cool. been, I've been to the ballpark for other things several times, but I've yet to go to an actual sounds game in that ballpark. And it's been way too long. So, yeah, there we go. Yeah, Nick asked, uh, was Corey Davis playing right field when you get kicked out? No, some other loser that I was yelling at. And, and his, I, a- I, he, he, it had to have been his relative, relative or his dad or something that came over and cussed me out. And I was, and I was like, look, bud, calm down. And then the uh, cops came over and I talked to the cops. That, yeah. I've told that story. So you go back and find that story. That, somewhere let, in that the let off a show one day. Huh? That let off a show one day. It did. That, that, that was a good show too. It was a good show. Very interesting show. All right, guys. Have a great rest of your Friday. Have an awesome weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Have a safe weekend. Enjoy whatever you've got coming up and your good news. And we'll see you then. Appreciate it, guys, as always.